Hello there. What is going on, everyone? Today we're going to be talking about the Dark Saber and why is it so heavy. If you guys are new here to the channel, I talk all about Star Wars, a lot of Star Wars gaming as well. We are giving away a lightsaber right now, and so if you want to enter to win a lightsaber because... Oh man, it is really heavy. All you have to do is be a subscriber. I can't hold this with one hand. You gotta be a subscriber and, <laughs> and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. It's as simple as that. Ooh, it's... It's real heavy, real heavy. Let's, let's put this thing down. So so why all of a sudden, it seems, is the Darksaber so heavy? Yeah, if you haven't already seen Book of Boba Fett Episode 5, spoiler warning, we are going to talk a lot about the fifth episode of the Book of Boba Fett. It's been out for a week now, so I feel like it's safe enough to make videos and talking about it a little bit, but I do want to give you the spoiler warning. Fantastic episode. If you haven't already seen it, go watch it now, then come back and watch the video. So... With that being said, we're going to talk all about the uh, the dark saber because we were treated to an amazing episode uh, that did not feature Boba Fett so much. It was more about the Mandalorian kind of catching up what's been going on with him. That did feature the dark saber. Fans did may have noticed one new aspect with this particular uh, episode of the dark saber that we had never really seen much of before, and that it was visibly. Heavy. Now, this isn't an entirely a new concept, but it was presented in a new way that has a lot of people thinking like, wait, did they just change the canon? Why all of a sudden is a lightsaber heavy? I thought the blade was supposed to be weightless. And it goes actually it goes kind of an, into an interesting thing for fans of older Legends books. Uh, you know, I used to do a lot of the old Star Wars reading when I was younger, and one of the things I always thought was fantastic about uh, the way only Jedi used lightsabers is the fact that the blade was weightless, and it, you know, this was all Legend stuff, but that it was kind of described to as been unintuitive or awkward. You know, when you're wielding a sword, it's got uh, a counterbalance and a certain weight and you, your body kind of anticipates it's going to weigh a certain amount but when the blade is out there and it's actually weightless there was great risk of injuring yourself so when the uh, first fight scene you know Mando Din Djarin is is swinging the blade a little bit clumsily and, uh, and and I think that's reasonable for somebody who has not really been trained with a lightsaber uh, but uh, but yeah he actually hurts himself uh, in in the fight and I loved this because this was something that was always uh, a risk they talk about this a lot in legends books so I always thought that this was a really cool thing that how can we never see somebody really hurting themselves with a blade that is so very very dangerous and this kind of reinforces one of the things that uh, you know, that Jedi are the ones who generally use weapons like this because they are connected with the Force, they're in tune with the Force, and they're less likely to injure themselves. So at first, when you're watching this episode, you may have just thought, oh, well, this is, is this interesting, he, he hurt himself. Uh, and it isn't until we get to the Armorer that we get more exposition on what is actually happening. Uh, you know, he says to her, it gets heavier with each move. Why is that? Now, you know, at first glance, some people might think, well, he's just because he's a Jedi and he shouldn't wield a lightsaber. Um, you know, we we also see a little bit of other struggling with the blade. And we're going to talk about a little bit with uh, with Paz Vizsla. But, uh, but you know, if this was your first episode of, of Star Wars, you know, or, or Star Wars live action, or the first time seeing, you know, a lightsaber on screen, you might just think that, oh, well, this is what they're describing. He's just not trained with it, and maybe he just can't use it. Um, you know, and now, to be fair, the armorer does ignite the lightsaber in this episode, but it's unclear if she herself is affected by this same condition, because she only ignites it for a, a short minute and isn't really wielding it in combat. So while she does activate the blade, she didn't really attempt to swing it. So we're, we're not clear if she is immune to this effect or not. But uh, but she, she, I would guess that it probably doesn't have as much weight for her. Uh, and she does give us this explanation. She says, that is because you are fighting against the blade. Uh, she says, your, your body is strong, but your mind is distracted. You know, suggesting you should be focusing on what you're fighting. Your mind is elsewhere. And... You know, and I think a lot of Star Wars fans might have thought, well, this isn't, you know, this isn't how how you know blades work, how plasma blades work. It's it's weightless. Why is why is this happening? And so uh, I think we're going to get a couple of answers today, but we have to kind of talk about some different examples to this because it does kind of at first glance seem like they may have changed the canon a little bit. Now, obviously, his mind is distracted. He's obviously thinking about Grogu. This is explained throughout the episode. He wants you know he wants some armor forged for Grogu. 
He's thinking about Grogu. Uh, and, and that's certainly the explanation that is given. And I think that's, you know, for a standalone episode or a standalone sci-fi, if this was the only thing you were to see, I think you could accept that and easily move on. But, you know, for those of us who've seen people wield lightsabers before, Han Solo cuts a tauntaun open with a lightsaber, never touched one before for the first time. You know, we see other examples of people even using the dark saber that don't seem to be affected by this. So, um, since, you know, and, and, but nobody's ever shown it so heavy that it, it drags along the ground. Uh, is it that maybe nobody else who's ever used the Darksaber has any friends or loved ones that they're worried about? I'm not sure if that's exactly true. I mean, we do see Moff Gideon use the Darksaber throughout, uh, throughout uh, you know, the, the Mandalorian. Uh, we, we see this multiple times, and he never seemed to indicate that it was heavy to him or that uh, that it was dragging on the ground to, to such an extent. He wielded it with, uh, you know, a fair degree of prowess. So... It is possible that he had trained with it for years. There's a lot about Moff Gideon's backstory that we don't really know. We know that he has a lot. He said millions of Mandalorians' blood are on his hands. So it is entirely possible that his connection to the Darksaber is different, but also, uh, you know, you know, quite in depth because of the amount of time he may have had it, which is at least several years is in my estimation. Uh, so so I think that might be somewhat of a pass for Moff, Moff Gideon. Um, you do have Pre Vizsla. This was the first time we ever saw the Darksaber. It was, of course, in Clone Wars. And, of course, he is part of the ancestral family to the Darksaber, but he had no problem wielding it uh, at all. Now, I'm sure he had people that he cared about, but also, you know, since this was the first time seeing the Darksaber, maybe he gets a pass. You know, they didn't want to you know, uh, make it ultra complicated. And of course, you know, sometimes the story just kind of gets developed more and more as time goes on. So I don't know if all of the history of the Darksaber had been written in the time of the very first, uh, you know, appearance of it in the Clone Wars. And uh, and also, you know, Pre Vizsla probably had done plenty of training with the Darksaber, but was it heavy for him? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and of course, Darth Maul, another famous wielder of the Darksaber, never gave the indication that the blade was heavy, but to be fair, he was force attuned. And, uh, you know, and, and of course, that is likely similar to what is going on with l lightsabers. Uh, and so I think, you know, since he's using the force to wield it, um, he probably gets a pass, as do any other force users who have held the Darksaber, such as Kanan. Kanan has at least ignited the Darksaber, gave no indication that it was going to drag on the ground. Um, so, you know, I think force users in general will get a pass with the Darksaber, um, which begs the question, was potentially Moff Gideon uh, or any of the other Mandalorians attuned with the force? Uh, it's, it's, that's, that's, you know, I think that's a question for another video. I don't really see any evidence to suggest that they were. Um, but speaking of Star Wars Rebels and Kanan, it takes us to, uh, to Sabine, Sabine Wren. And, and I think this is where things kind of get interesting. And I, I, if you haven't seen Star Wars Rebels, I definitely suggest you watch it. Go back and check out the episode Trials of the Darksaber for a fantastic amount of exposition that actually has a lot of new explanations now and a lot of new depth in light of this recent episode of Book of Boba Fett. So when Sabine does ignite this Darksaber to train with Kanan, uh, she does initially say it's heavier than I thought. And to be fair, this thing is heavy. The <laughs> but then again, this is a little different because this is a prop, prop replica. And if you want to see more about this too, I have a video unboxings and stuff of the, uh, the, the Hasbro uh, Darksaber. But um, it, she does say it's heavier than I thought. And you get a little bit of explanation for that with Kanan. And, and Kanan actually, Kanan's words are something I kind of glossed over at the time. And I just thought it was part of just routine training. But it's really cool stuff. So Kanan tells her, um, your thoughts, your actions, they become energy. They flow through the crystal and become part of the blade. Uh, so I didn't think about much about that at the time. But now all of a sudden there's new depth and new meaning to those uh, words. And, and I feel like that kind of... That, that feeds into why Din Djarin shows it on the ground. But in this episode, Sabine obviously had people she cared about. She had loved ones. She was, it was all about her family. She was definitely distracted. She definitely had a ton of, uh, a ton of stuff going on, a ton of drama, a ton of distractions. And, and, and a lot of the stuff with her duel with Kanan does kind of mimic in some ways uh, a little bit of what Din Djarin is going through currently with the Darksaber. But at no point in this uh, episode, does she sort of drag the lightsaber on the ground? It's never 
that heavy for her. It's a little heavy, and they talk a lot about it a little bit, and, and that compared to other lightsabers, we do know that the darksaber is heavier than most. It's a, he, Kanan even says it's a heavy blade uh, because it just happens to be heavier than most. It's a very powerful blade, too, and so it's able to channel even more of your thoughts and your energy into the power and the force of the blade. Now, this is a little bit of a departure of old canon from from Star Wars Legends canon, uh, but that's currently the the current canon, at least with this blade, uh, and presumably uh, with with lightsabers in general. In that they, uh, you know, that's kind of trying to explain the Force connection that Jedi have with their sabers, uh, and I think that he he's trying to kind of explain how a non-Force user would connect with a lightsaber if if they could, and I think that's what happens when Kanan's sorting sort of training uh, Sabine on how to wield the dark saber, but. Still, again, she didn't drag it on the floor. It was never that, ha that never that heavy. So what changed? Well, I think it all starts with Bo-Katan Kryze. Uh, you know, during Star Wars Rebels, Sabine eventually hands the Darksaber over to Bo-Katan to help unite the clans. And that's kind of where the Mandalorian arc in Star Wars Rebels ends uh, pre-A New Hope. And so, you know, there is definitely a, a big gap in time between A New Hope and The Mandalorian when we, you know, find out that Bo-Katan does not have the Darksaber anymore, you know, and, and there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of, of missing time within here of, like, what happened within all of this. And we certainly get some, uh, you know, some of the explanation uh, by the armor. A specific thing, she said that she, it was gifted to her. And now this was a big point of contention in Mandalorian Season 2, and that, you know, she couldn't take it from Din Djarin. And all the fans were up in arms saying, well, what happened? You know, what happened between then and here? She took it from Sabine and it was fine. And now all of a sudden she can't? Uh, and, and, and there was some exposition on this. And that because it was gifted to her and not won by Creed. And no, I don't mean the band Creed. But rather, you know, by trial, by combat. Uh, because it was gifted to her that... That was a, a big problem, and her reign ended uh, in misery, and the, the Night of a Thousand Tears, and Mandalore was bombed by the Empire, and there's this whole sad story about um, about what happened. And it was, you know, according to the Armorer, it's because she was gifted it and not won. She didn't win it in combat. Now, this is a really important part of, I think, what changed between, like, the pre-Mandalorian the you know pre the Mandalorian uh, dark saber or I would say pre Star Wars Rebels uh, you know and Clone Wars dark saber versus where we are now post Return of the Jedi uh, and I think it all kind of comes down um, to to religion you know uh, Din Djarin even says you know weapons are my religion uh, I say religion or mythology you know in this scene right here you know if you've seen Mando season two uh, Moff Gideon even says uh, to him when Din Djarin because Din Djarin had no idea. Right, because he was wielding the lightsaber. By the way, in this scene, he was holding the dark saber, no problem. He wasn't dragging on the ground. You know, he had just fought Moff Gideon in combat. He comes in swinging this thing around like it's no problem. It wasn't heavy for him then, either. But at the same time, he didn't know about the prophecy. He didn't know about the story. He didn't know what happened. He didn't even know who Bo-Katan was. You know, like there was a lot of stuff he didn't know, and uh, and so it's very very interesting because Moff Gideon says the dark saber doesn't have power. The story does, you know, and, and it could be that Din Djarin had no problem until he knew about the story, until he knew about some of the, the history, and, and then, you know, Bo-Katan confirms it. So, we already know that weapons are his religion, and he's learning more about the story, and this is his culture, and, and even learning even more to his religion, so could it be that it begins to take hold of him? It, it begins to be like a, this, this pressure, you know, and, we, you know, certainly we all deal with pressure. But could it be this this responsibility, this burden that that he has, that he wields it? Now it's getting heavier on him. Sort of a metaphor for it, it you know, all the, the the all of his problems, the, the worry of Grogu, the the problems. Maybe again, we don't know what conversations happened after this episode ended, and and because apparently he and Bo Katan parted ways, and he kept the dark saber. So. She wasn't happy, and uh, apparently he wasn't happy. You know, he's still been looking for a family, right? And he's not the only one who believes in this religion because we also see Paz Vizsla try to pick up the Darksaber, and boy, he struggles with it. Maybe even more so than uh, Din Djarin, right? He really struggle, struggles with this thing. And he's of the same mindset and of the same, same belief system 
that the Mandalorian is, unlike somebody like Moff Gideon, right? And so, so it's all about what you believe and 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 your mythology and your and your energy, and of course a little bit of your mind, because again, Kanan does say that the the blade channels your energy, and so uh, maybe it has a lot to do with your mental state and where you are at. And I believe that this is going to inform you know Din Djarin, the Mandalorian's future character development, uh, and that he you know. Obviously, it seems like he's going back to Mandalore, uh, whether that's going to be, you know, in Mandalorian Season 3 or or somewhere beyond. But to kind of redeem himself, to prove that he doesn't have to prove himself to anybody or anything, or maybe he does to prove it, but to Mandalore as a whole and not just to one particular sect. And, uh, of course, I'm sure he will eventually kind of cleanse the the spirit of, of burdens and, and, and weight on his shoulders emotionally and or physically. I mean, maybe Beskar is pretty heavy, possibly, you know. <laughs> but but I think he'll be wielding that Darksaber uh, high at some point. Whether he keeps it, uh, is another thing. I wouldn't be surprised if he is able to, you know, cleanse everything and then kind of establish, a, like, ban that, like, no, it doesn't have to be one. It can be given. Don't, you know, I think we're going to learn a little bit more about Bo-Katan, and I think we're going to learn that uh, maybe, it, maybe it wasn't actually because she was given it, but if people thought that it, that it's because she was given it and didn't win, that uh, that the, the belief system itself um, added unnecessary weight that didn't need to be there in the first place. So I think it's all in his head, and because it's in his head and your mental state is directly linked with the body, uh, and of course, since Paz Vizsla has the same belief system, that is why the Darksaber is so heavy. All right, you guys, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you think down in the comments section. Don't forget to check some of the links that are in the video description below. If you want to join our Discord, we talk a lot about Star Wars games like X-Wing, Armada, Star Wars Legion. Uh, a lot of, we do Star Wars video games. We talk Star Wars lore. It's all kinds of good stuff. I will talk to you guys later. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing and help make this channel possible. I will talk to you soon, and may the Force be with you.